In the last video, we've already explained that why the estimators beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat are random variables. They can, treat it, they can be treated as functions of the random sample x, y. When we draw a sample x, i, y, i with n observations from the population, we will have an estimator beta 1 hat. When we draw another sample, we will have a new estimator beta 1 hat prime. Imagine we can draw infinite times of the sample, we will have infinite beta 1 hat. Then we can have a distribution of this beta 1 hat. For example, suppose the distribution looks like this. This is the density of beta 1 hat. We've already shown that the expectation of beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1. So this beta 1 hat will be centered around the true parameter beta 1. But they can be centered in this way or in the, the other way, which, which is the distribution is very centered around the true parameter beta 1. If they are centered in this way, it's very likely that once we draw a sample and estimate a beta 1 hat, we will have a beta 1 hat that is very far away from the true parameter beta 1. But it's, it's less likely to be the case for the second distribution. So in other words, we would like to have this type of distribution of beta 1 hat that is we, also, we are also interested in the variance of the OLS estimators. The variance is relevant for the efficiency of the estimator. In this video, we will derive the variance of the beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat when conditioning on x. Following the previous video, if we take expectation on beta 1 hat, conditional on x, we have this equation. We do not need to worry about the fixed parameter beta 1 and the terms contain x because we can treat them as fixed. But in order to calculate this variance, we need, to, we need additional assumptions on the conditional variance of the arrow term, which is the v VA variance ui conditional on x. There are two cases regarding the assumption on the conditional variance of the arrow term. The first one is the homoscatasticity case. That is, the conditional variance is a constant. In other words, the unobservable term u has the same variance for different x. The second one is the heteroscatasticity case. That is, the conditional variance is not a constant. The arrow terms u changes with x. In this week, we will focus on the homoscatasticity case. In week 10, we will learn how to test and correct the problem of heteroscatasticity. Notice that the unbiasedness of the estimators do not rely on the conditional variance. When we prove the unbiasedness of beta 1 hat and beta 0 hat, we do not need, need to use the variance of the arrow term. So no matter the arrow term is homoscatastic or heteroscatastic, the estimators are always unbiased when assumptions 1 to 4 hold. This figure illustrates the case of homoscatastic error term. There are three dimensions, the x-axis, the y-axis, and the third dimension is the density distribution of the dependent variable y conditional on the independent variable x. So this is also called PDF. 
The dashed line in the pop is the population regression function. If we fix the independent variable x, this conditional expectation of y is also fixed because beta 0 and beta 1 are fixed parameters. For instance, for the x here, the conditional expectation of y is this point. For the another x, well, let's call it x1, this expectation, conditional expectation of y is here. But conditional on x, the dependent variable y can take many different values. This is because yi equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times x plus ui. This arrow term u is also a random variable. These y's are on this line. Some are here and some are here. Suppose we plot the density distribution and we will have this shape. Notice that this part is fixed. So the distribution of yi is the same as the distribution of the arrow term ui. So this distribution, this PDF, is also the distribution of ui, of, of the arrow term u, conditional on x. Therefore, for different x, the distribution of the arrow term are the same. The conditional variance of u do not change with the x. What about the heteroscatastic case? For some x, x1 here, like it here, the distribution of ui is very, very concentrated. But for some other x, x2 here, the, the distributions of the arrow terms are very dispersed. That means the variance of u conditional on x1 is smaller than the variance of the arrow term conditional on x2, which is smaller than the variance conditional on x3. In other words, the conditional variance changes with the x. Sometimes we can check heteroscatasticity through the scatter plot. For instance, suppose the population regression function is here. The arrow term ui is e equal to yi minus this expectation. So we have the arrow term here. This is the arrow term ui, ui. For the arrow term here, they are very centered. When the x is small, all these arrow terms are very centered. But when x is large, the arrow terms here are very dispersed. Notice that these arrow terms do not necessarily violate the assumption 4. So here the arrow terms, like the expectation of these arrow terms conditional on x is still equal to 0. But their variances are larger than the variances when the x is small. Here is a real-world example for heteroscatasticity. We want to know the relationship between the wage and the education. So we collect some data and run the econometric model to estimate beta 1. The independent variable is the years of education. And the dependent variable is the hourly wage. From the regression, we found that beta 1 hat is positive. It's equal to 1.5. So higher education is associated with higher wage. But if we plot the observations, we will find that this relationship is quite accurate when the education level is low. But when the education level is high, we have much diverse here for the wages.
Some people who have the higher education but also are likely to end up with low wages. But some people might might with higher education may have like extremely high paid jobs. So this is an example of for the heteroscedasticity. The variance of the arrow term changes with the x. To calculate the variance of the estimators, we consider the homoscedasticity assumption. Assumption 5 says that given any value of the explanatory variable x, the arrow term u has always the same variance. In other words, the conditional variance of the arrow term u is a constant, which is the sigma square. Notice that this assumption plays no role for the unbiasedness of the OLS estimators. This assumption also implies that the conditional expectation of the arrow term square is also equal to sigma square and the unconditional expectation of the arrow term square is also the sigma square. To derive these two equations, let's check the formula for the variance. The variance of a random variable is equal to the So this is the formula, the variance of a random variable z is equivalent to the expectation is equivalent to the expectation of d square minus the square of the expectation of z. So it's the same here. Then by assumption 4, this term is equal to 0. So this term is equal to sigma square. The reason why the unconditional expectation of the u square is also equal to the sigma is the same as the before by the law of the iterated expectation. If we take expectation over the Under assumptions 1 to 5, we have the sampling variances of the OLS estimators. The variance of beta 1 hat, actually it's also conditional on x, is equal to this sigma square divided by the total sum of squares of x, which here is SST of x. The variances of beta 0 hat is this form for, from this formula. Notice that these two formulas hold under the assumption 5, the homoscedasticity case. If the arrow term show heteroscedasticity, these two variances are not valid. We are often interested in the variance of the beta 1 hat. Remember that the variance of beta 1 hat is equal to the variance of beta 1 plus SSTX summation DI UI conditional on X. So first notice that beta 1 is a fixed term. The SSTX conditional on X, you can also treat it, uh, it as a constant. This di is the deviation of xi, so it's also kind of a constant. So the, what only matters for the variance is the variance of ui, conditional on x. So remember how, what's the variance of a plus bz, where a and b are constant, but z is a random variable it's equal to the b square variance of z. So the here it's same. Beta 1, we can ignore it because it's a constant, which is the a here. So all these terms, 
which is derived which is directly gives us the SSTX, we take the square and the summation is also summation di square and the variance of ui conditional on x. Notice that this term is the same as sstx, so we can simplify the equation as sstx and the variance of ui conditional on x, which is sstx sigma square. What we can learn from the formula for the variance of beta 1 hat, variance of beta 1 hat is equal to the square of the summation of xi over x bar. First, the larger the arrow variance sigma square, the larger the variance of the beta 1 hat. This makes sense because if there are more variations in the unobserved factors, it will be more difficult for us to precisely estimate beta 1. For the denominator, the larger the total variation in the independent variable x, the smaller the variance for the beta 1 hat. The reason is that if x are all close to each other, we cannot tell the relationship between x and y. For example, if the x is very close, then we don't know whether the relationship is in this shape or this shape. But if the x are spreading out, it's easier for us to trace out the relationship. Notice the total variation in x will always increase when we increase the sample size. Therefore, a larger sample size is always better because it decreases the variance of the slope parameter. The only problem is that the sigma square is unknown. Why? The arrow term is from the population model. We often don't know what kind of unobservable factors are in this arrow term, let alone their variances. But once we draw a sample, we estimate the coefficient and get the residuals. If the regression captures the true relationship between x and y, the residuals should be approximate the true arrow term u. One idea is to use the residuals to get an estimate of the arrow variance. We first check the relationship between residuals and the arrow term. The residual ui hat is equal to the observed yi minus the fitted value yi hat. If we replace yi with the population model, we can simplify the you residual as the arrow term minus these two terms. Because beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat are unbiased estimators, it means that the residuals on average equal to the expectation of ui, which is 0. However, the residual is not equal to the arrow term. The variations of residuals can also be different from the variation of ui. If we can observe the arrow term ui, we can estimate the conditional variance sigma square with the sample variance of these arrow terms. However, we cannot observe the arrow term u. Maybe we can use some estimators based on the residuals to estimate the sigma square. The first candidate is the sample variance of the residuals, but it turns out it's a biased estimator of sigma square. The second candidate is adjusted sample variance of the residual squares, and this form is an un unbiased estimator for sigma square. So the here, the n, is the total sample size. 
the k is number of independent variables. In the simple linear regression model, we only have like one x. So the k is equal to one. On the assumption one to five, we will have theorem three that the sigma hat square is an unbiased estimator for sigma square. Even if we do not know the true variance of the error term, we can estimate it from the residuals which we get from the sample, the estimation based on the sample. The sigma hat square is adjusted with the term n minus k minus 1. It's also called the degrees of freedom. I will skip the proof of this theorem, but but I will talk about a little bit about the intuition why we need to adjust the denominator by these degrees of freedom. Compared to the sample variance of residuals, which is SSR divided by the N, remember that in the last video, we talked about some properties of the residuals for any sample. The first one is that the summation of residuals is equal to zero. And the second one is that the summation of xi and the residuals is equal to zero. They correspond to two first order conditions when we derive beta zero hat and beta one hat. Like think about it, originally we have n residuals from the regression. But these n residuals need to follow these two restrictions. So we kind of lose two residuals. Every time we have n minus two residuals, the other two residuals can be calculated from these two equations. Therefore, only n minus two residuals are truly useful. So we need to adjust the, the n to n minus two to maintain the unbiasedness. The sigma hat is also called the standard error of the regression. Recall the standard deviation of beta 1 hat is you take square root of the variance of beta 1 hat, which is equal to the sigma divided by the square root of SSTx. If we substitute sigma hat for sigma, then we have the standard error of beta 1 hat which is here. Similarly, the standard error for beta zero hat is you just replace sigma with sigma hat and take square root for the rest terms. Notice that the standard error of beta one hat and the standard error of beta zero hat can also be viewed as random variables when we think of running OLS over different samples of Y. This is true because sigma hat is also a kind of function varies with different samples. If we have a sample, the X and Ys are fixed. Then we can calculate the standard error of beta one hat and beta zero hat. These two different ways to think about the estimators are quite common in linear regression models. When the sample is treated as random variables, the estimators we obtain are also random variables, and we can check their expectations, their variances. But when the x and y is a specific sample, which is some observations we know, all these estimators become fixed numbers. They can be calculated from the given data and based on these formulas. So always remember the difference between random sample and a, a, a specific sample with some observations.